Welcome, everybody, to the Magic Beans podcast. We are back again for episode number 20. So I think that's uh, that's quite an achievement for us, and I'm pretty happy that uh, I'm actually here for it after missing a week last week. I am your host, and my name is Shorty, and I'm joined, as usual, by a few beans tonight. We don't, don't have everybody here, but I have Cracker on the line. How are you going, Cracker? Good, mate. Good. Welcome back. Glad to have you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for uh, relinquishing the hosting role and letting me back in the, the driver's seat. Uh, yeah. I, was, I don't, uh, don't yeah. know if I'll keep it long term, but we'll <laughs> see how we go. Uh, I think you might. <laughs> thank you. And we have Chewy again. How are you going, Chewy? Good. Good to have you back. I know I give you a hard time. <laughs> are, you sh- are you sure? But yeah, no. It's, uh, I'm just trying to you know build up Cracker's confidence. I feel sorry for Shorty because, like, we rag on him and then we go, hey, Shorty, here's all the editing you have to do. Put this out. It's just like he has to listen to the beats like six times while he takes out all the junk in our recordings. It's just yeah. it's uh, extra just, savage. You're saying that's making it far more fun for me now. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's not go down the line of you purposely putting things in that I need to, to cut out of the uh, episodes. That's, that's not necessary. Thank you. Okay. No worries. <laughs> All right, so we have a jam-packed episode. Uh, yeah, we've we've actually been up to quite a lot over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think just after you guys recorded the last time, you all came to my house actually, and uh, and we had a beans dinner, which was a bit of fun. Got all the families over and managed to put the kids in one room, their wives in another room, and and we managed to play a bit of commander. So that was quite fun. I know I certainly enjoyed the night. I think you guys did too. Yeah, it was, yeah, great. It was really good. And yep. um, shout out to Scott, who's not with us tonight, but um, he managed to win his first ever game of Commander against us, so uh, laid the beat down on us. So He, he uh, certainly did, and I, I think that's uh, put the hooks into him, and he might be uh, becoming a real full-time filthy casual and, and just playing Commander from, from here on look, out, maybe. And, and I, honestly, it was nothing to do with us, uh, you know, deliberately not playing the correct spell in a turn to let him get... <laughs> You know, ahead just to get him or anything. It wasn't no, no, nothing that, to that, do that, with that me happen. getting stuck on a couple of lands and yeah, nah. Yeah. Well, he played no, creatures no, like who does that in Commander? I, yeah, I, like he weird. played things that attacked every turn. I was just like, whoa, hang on now. Yeah. Like let's let's talk about this. I just want to draw cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. That's What's the point of having a hundred card deck if you can't draw bulk cards, right? I mean, there's yeah, some really right. pretty ones in there, man. I put them in there to see them. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I think you've just like nailed Commander on the head right there, Cracker. It's I've got a hundred card deck. I actually want to see the cards that are in this deck. So Correct. I'm going to try and play for as long as I possibly can and, and just stall the game out so it takes five hours. Yeah, exactly. If I accidentally win, well, so be it. That happens. <laughs> what, yeah. One of the primary win conditions of my deck is to draw most of it. So, you know, like, that seems good. Yeah, yeah. It kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, pretty anyway, good. Anyway, we are, we are not talking about Commanders tonight. That we are not, not a Commander our... podcast, no. No, we Yet. are not, and, and that is not on our list of stuff to talk about, but we do have lots of other things. So, the main thing, or I think the thing we'll get into first, is the Bushfire Fundraiser event that uh, that we put on along with Next Level Games in Ringwood, and we've been sort of talking about this over the last couple of casts, and Chewy has done a ton of work in the background getting everything up and running and, and putting this event on. So, uh, yeah, we might pass over to you, Chewy. You can give us a bit of a rundown on how it went and uh, how our donation total ended up. Thank you is, is where I'll start with this. Um, <laughs> yes. Like, yes, very big thank you to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you to, to, to you guys um, for, you know, like supporting me in this because I, I know, you know, we as a podcast had some – some plans uh, that kind of got, you know, put on ice for a few weeks while, while we did this. Um, thank you to uh, Andy and the crew at Next Level Games Ringwood. Uh, thanks to everyone who donated prizes, Chris, Matt, um, Jimbo. Andy, Jim. Yeah, everybody, everybody who donated, you know who you are. Um, and uh, I'll start with the, the tally before we get into the day itself. So uh, with the entr- entry to the Highlander event, the Pioneer event, the silent auctions, and the uh, the loud auctions that we did. The total, uh, oh, and the donation from Isaac from Rob's MTG auctions. Let's not forget that. The total donation uh, from the day to the CFA bushfire appeal was two thousand three hundred and fifty four dollars. So, yeah. So, uh, 
it, for anybody who showed up on the day, anybody who placed a bid, anybody who it, liked the event on Facebook, anything, that, uh, anyone who was involved at any level, just take a minute, give yourself a pat on the back. Like you contributed to something really great for a really good cause. So again, yeah, that, that is a lot of money. It, yeah, it's it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and um, I'm. It still still blows me away when I think about that. So um, yeah, it was it was a really really. Uh, good day we had um some some cool magic played um i'll let you guys talk about um pioneer because you guys played in the event but i um i'll, yep. I'll just um i'll talk about <laughs> why, why well, are you laughing why, well, it's sorry. The, well, yeah sure you you, you played we the played event. Not, yeah, you, you were you, you <laughs> I mean, were involved I cards yes. on the table i don't know if i played <laughs> i appreciated your donation to the course i guess <laughs> yeah. right yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so we played some highlander um Again, uh, I won't go into the depths of Highlander. Actually, if you want to know, yeah, you yeah, know a bit more about Highlander, you do want to know a bit more about Okay, so Highlander. No, 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 not, no, 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 not now. No, 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 no. <laughs> people, people oh. can go and watch the uh, the YouTube video that you put the YouTube up. YouTube channel, from, yeah. From yeah. yeah. Chewy was so excited, he thought we'd thrown him a tangent. He's like, oh, <laughs> I, I normally was... have to go digging for <laughs> these things. They just given me one. I had both hands on it for a moment then too. So yeah, we had uh, I think thirty or twenty nine players for the for the Highlander event battling it out for a uh, Savannah and a Scrubland, and um, so we had five rounds and a cut to top eight, and uh, yeah, check out the uh, the YouTube channel for you know, just some little snippets, not full gameplay footage, but I was just hovering around with the camera, uh, trying to find some things that were cool. You know, there was a Black Lotus in play at one point. There were some foreign black bordered original jewel lands of some cool foils and um, smiling faces while they were doing it, which was which was really cool. <laughs> um, there was a deck that played Cataclysm. <laughs> there was um, oh, yeah, there, there was some um, there was some really cool decks being played. And um, yeah, shout out to you know the Highlander community in Melbourne who yeah showed up in good numbers to support the event and um, to to Jim. Um, who took down the event with his uh, blue red um, counter burn tempo y um, deck? I'm not, you know, it wasn't the flashiest deck going around, but he uh, it was a powerful deck and he played really well. Um, and he, he did lava spike a couple of planeswalkers. So, yeah, it's a um, uh, an interesting. Uh, in, an interesting approach, but it, it got him there. And yeah, then we had a um, the second event that we kicked off on the day was was some Pioneer. So you guys played in that, um, and that was uh, top prizes were for the top finishers were a box of Kaladesh and the San Diego Comic Con um, promo pack for the the War of the Spark Gods, which is a, a nice little collector item as well. Um, so I'll start with you, Cracker. Uh, mm, yeah. You, you played in the event. <laughs> I um, did. How, how'd you go? I, oh, mate, I absolutely got crushed. Killed it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not killed it. Got killed. <laughs> got killed. <laughs> you, um, over and over and over, over again. Over and over and over <laughs> again. So I, yeah, it didn't go well for me. So I played Mono Blue Tempo. So like I've been talking about, um, it's pretty much like from previous standard with a, a few little upgrades, a few new cards, Brazen Borrowers and some of the new lands and stuff. And uh, two of my rounds were against like the super low to the ground mono red. And uh, yeah, it just didn't go well. I played hor- <laughs> I played horribly. <laughs> Part of when you, you get all of the cards for your deck, you know, as <laughs> Chris arrives and you, you find it, put them together. So you've had zero practice. I had zero practice. No reps. Yeah. Uh, and many, many punts. But I had a great time. All my opponents were awesome. Um, I think one of the coolest things about the whole day was just how happy everyone was. Like there's some pretty big prizes up for grabs, right? Like a couple of original jewels and stuff like that. So there's some real money there for a lot of people. And there was it just had like, a different feel though, didn't it? There was it just it wasn't yeah, the yeah. usual it wasn't like, like even we, like, pl- we played com- it was competitive REL. Yeah, it was. We it, had a judge it and did we did not feel like a competitive not, event. Not at all. It was like everyone was just super happy to be there and everyone knew the cause and everyone was happy to just like, you know, play some sweet games and, you know, there's heaps of people just there were I, I didn't hear any 
bad beat stories. You know, like there's always some dude on the side of end of a GP after they've played the double up who's just lost and he's just like got the sour face on because he just, you know, never drew his third land or like whatever happened, right? And there's always like a couple of those kicking around. Just no one. And like, I promise you it happened. Like with the amount of magic that was played, there were people that got, you know, color screwed or, you know, just whatever, the, the typical magic things. And yeah, everyone was just super happy the whole time. Was, yeah, that was true. Was like I, I the best certainly, event. like upon reflection, like talking to people, because I didn't play and I just like an- generally annoyed people with a camera for the day. Uh, and, you <laughs> know, generally made- annoyed people with your poor jokes. Well, that's any day. But <laughs> that's every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say, oh, how'd you go? And they're like, oh, yeah, I lost. But, you know, like there was, yeah, nobody ever went down that rabbit hole of, of why they lost and, and how hard done by they were. The, the general attitude was, uh, uh, was very different to a normal tournament when there was prizes of that sort of caliber on the line. So, yeah, shout out to everybody who, uh, who came uh, with that attitude because yeah. it's, uh, you know, playing Magic for the right reasons, I guess, it comes down to, doesn't it? Yeah, everyone just had, you know, like, everyone was happy to talk about the sweet games and, you know, like, I mean, one of the games I played... Um, my opponent was on um, hardened scales, and so he was playing like green, black hardened scales with like winding constrictor and like a bunch of evolved dudes and pelt collectors and like verderous gear hulks. Nice. And it was great, and it was heaps of fun. And he, you know, kicked my teeth in, which is fine. And so we were finished early in the round, and we played another couple of games. And he's like, "Do you want to swap decks?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, let's do that." And so then we just like <laughs> literally just nice. handed each other the deck, and we swapped decks, and you know, just. <laughs> was just did you win or did he crush you yeah i know i did okay okay (laughs) (laughs) which made me feel a little bit better but you know um but yeah it was just awesome and then you know like the auctions were happening just after that and you know people were throwing bids around and everyone was just joking and laughing it was yeah perfect it went as as well as you could have hoped and like everyone there were heaps and heaps of different archetypes for pioneer like i faced you know like four aggressive decks but there was there was a whole range of stuff kicking around. You know, there was Shorty was on Dredge and, you know, there were people playing like Blue White Control and there was Bant Spirits and there was Burn and I think someone was running around in Inverter and stuff and there was just yeah, like... Yeah, there, there was one Inverter deck. There was like a Mono Chris Green was on Stompy green deck. Ramp and like, yeah. it was just it kind of... It was the Wild West you hoped Pioneer would be and people weren't all just jamming meta decks. It was just like, hey... I liked this or this strategy is fun or this really appeals to me. And people were just like stoked that there were cards that they could play that were out of standard, but not good enough for modern again. So yeah, it was kind of like exactly what you'd hope Pioneer would be. Bit of a, yeah. uh, It lived up to the expectations that I had in my own mind. Um, And as someone who was, you know, kind of working on the event and, uh, you know, trying to coordinate it all, you, you hope things go well, but you know, you get that, you know, doubt creeps in, oh, what if no one shows up? And, and, you know, what if there's some incident that, you know, leaves a sour taste in people's mouths and all the rest of it. But um, none of that happened. And we um, we ended up with, a you know, a, a, an amazing event. And it's, um, it's something that, um, speaking to, to Andy from Next Level, uh, something that we, we'll, we'll do again, maybe annually. Uh, for you know, we'll pick a charity and and do that. So uh, it's something that I think the beans will be able to sort of continue to do uh, over the course of the you know however long we do this for and have yeah, a um, yeah hopefully have a, a just as good a time doing it. Um, so shorty, yes, you were dredging. What happened? <laughs> were you I dredging? Was not, I was not dredging. There is no dredge in Judge. Pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> you were playing. Yeah. You, you were playing a deck with graveyard recursion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did my usual flip flop between five different decks right up until the day of the tournament. As, Doesn't as sound I like you at all. Tend to do. Yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in the end, like I, I came very close to playing the black white auras deck from Ken Yuki Hero, which we'll probably talk about soon. Um, I, I, I got all the cards for that, had that ready to go, and I, I did a bit of gold fishing of that and just went, uh, I'm not, not really feeling this. And I'd, I'd played some with the, the dredgeless dredge, saltide dredge deck. Um, and yeah, found it to be super powerful as a, as a game one deck. Yep. Um, and I kind of went, you know, I'm, I really enjoy playing this. I'm pretty sure I can win most of my game ones. 
And then, I've, you know, yeah, they're going to have graveyard hate grade uh, game two and grade game three, but I'm pretty sure I can fight through it and win one of those uh, two games. It, that actually thought, reminds yeah. me of playing um, Affinity. Actual Dredge? In, or <laughs> Actual Dredge or, yeah, Affinity in Modern. Those sort of um, yeah. really hyper-focused decks um, where you, you know, you have a really high win percentage in game one and then you win game one then and then you're like, okay, now that now it really starts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and a- you, you kind of like, like if I if I'm winning game one, I'm going to be on the draw game two, probably going to lose that, and then I'm going to be on the play on game three. So if I can get my super fast starts that I the deck can do on my game three, I'm just going to win. So yeah. it's um in the end I went you know it's a fun event anyway I don't really care that much and so I just yeah ran ran the dredge so yeah I ended up. Two, three, yeah, probably could have won at least one of those rounds. I've had a couple of mis- misplays and th- just the usual lack of practice, all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, the deck was good fun. I, I had heaps of fun and, and the day was awesome. All, all my opponents were really good and had a great time. And, and like Cracker was saying, the, we didn't get that uh, hyper meta that you would tend to normally get for a competitive event. Like if this was a PTQ I think we would have seen a whole lot more uh, Lotus Breach and inverted decks and things like that because you, you've got people coming to to really try and win. This seemed a lot more like people bringing their deck that they just wanted to play and, and have some fun. So, I, yeah, that, it was really yeah. good to see. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, it's, yeah. I, yeah, as I said, there was every, yeah, it's what we hoped. Um, yep. So, so, yeah. so yeah. overall, a, a great event. Um, yeah, I think Chewy, you did a great job, and and also your wife Jen. Shout out to her. I know she did a lot of work in the background as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah good good on you guys, and uh, yeah, we will definitely be looking uh, maybe around the same time next year or at some point next year at at finding another charity event that we can do with a store. So whether that's at at Next Level Games Ringwood again or, or somewhere else, who knows? If you if you run a store and you want us to help you run an event there, then get in touch with us. Absolutely, <laughs> we'll, we'll I'm happy to give away can, free uh, wins. <laughs> 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 yep, just sign someone up for uh, for free wins against Cracker. Exactly. <laughs> so, Shorty, you you yes. were talking about, and we we actually played a few games of Pioneer, like just while the Highlander event was running before it started and I yep, I yep. had a go of that um black white auras deck. Uh that was that was spicy, man. Yeah, like yeah. That, so there were a couple of events and that one it took second. Yep. So we had uh not the weekend just gone, but the weekend before that. Um so not not the weekend of our uh, bushfire event. There was the Players Tours, PTs, in uh, Brussels and Nagoya. So, that's the PT uh, Asia Pacific and the PT Europe. Um, and they're the, the new equivalent of... Well, they're, they're not quite the level of a pro tour. Regional and, and I think Players Tours, right? Yeah, yeah. So, there's I've been a lot of discussion between people and, you know, various podcasts and Twitter and that sort of stuff about where do they rank in terms of level? Are they the equivalent of pro tours and that sort of thing? And... I, I still consider it a pro tour. It's it's a new system, right? I think we just have to go. Yeah. These are PTs now, and like that's it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It feels to me like it was more than a GP and less than a yeah. PT. Yeah, I, I would put it, but basically, yeah, exactly there between the level of a GP and the level of a, a an old school pro tour. I, I look at it slightly there. differently. So, if I didn't bomb out in every single top eight that I make, <laughs> and I. <I'd- laughs> Hum- humble brag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I'd, if I'd qualified, if you know, if it was me playing on that tour, I would 100% treat that oh, with yeah, the me. same <laughs> respect as I would treat playing on the pro tour. So in my mind, like the yeah, players yeah. there are, you know, are there to, to, to win. Yeah. And the magic player quality across the world is really high. Uh, yeah. It's not like 20 years ago, you know, it, it wasn't as, as high. Uh, you know, sort of on average. But if, you, if you're if you going there and you're XO halfway through day one, I think on average you're going to be playing against players that are just as good at Nagoya or in Brussels as if you were, if they were combined. I, I, yeah. I feel. I, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's a, it's, it's a tournament you have to qualify, you have to be a really good player to get there. So, yeah, like um, I guess from a, you know, actual high-level pro players' point of view, they might not see it as the same. 
but from the plebs like us, the, the people that live in the real world, it's still the equivalent of a pro tour. So, either know, way... Because, like, the, they took the testing really seriously for this. Yeah, like, yeah. Both well, you and I follow a lot of money on, on Twitter. Yeah. So, they, yeah. they were treating it like it was a PT. Yeah, yeah. The top but, uh, eight yeah. certainly looked like a pro tour top eight. Oh, man, they sure <laughs> did. They were stacked. <laughs> yeah. Especially the Japan one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so Japan, we kind of we got the coverage for the two events over the whole weekend. So they aired Brussels first. So they they were played at similar times. Brussels started a little bit before Nagoya, um, just with the with the time zones and whatever. Um, but they Wizards put on coverage for Brussels, and then they they put on on the Wizards Japanese Twitch stream. They put on live coverage of Nagoya, um, in with Japanese commentators. Um, but then once the Brussels coverage had finished, they would then, they then ran the Nagoya coverage with English speaking commentators commentating over the, the matches. So it also meant they could cut out a bit of the downtime and all that sort of stuff. So I really like it, this it, concept. Uh, I think- yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it meant we literally had high level magic being played basically like. 24 hours a day for three days straight. So at almost any point of the day, you could tune in and it's like, oh, there's Paul Oviedo playing against, I don't know, someone else, yeah. <laughs> Canister or whatever, <laughs> like high-level high players just on, uh, like people of that level on the stream all the time. So that was really cool. Um, and well, yeah, how, the, the- Before you move on, how did you feel the coverage went? Like I, it wasn't as good as... In my mind, it wasn't as good as some of the Mythic Championships that we've had recently. No, but no. but there was there was quantity over quality, I guess. When you've got yeah two of like so. I, the coverage from Brussels was pretty much equivalent of a, a Grand Prix coverage. Mm-hmm. Um, like they basically just had a little fenced off area for the the feature matches, and and they had the cameras set up and whatever. But it didn't have that dedicated feature match area like you get at or you used to get at the pro tours um so i guess from a player point of view it may not have felt quite as special but the coverage is still fine you still got to see what was going on they still had good commentators riley knight still on there talking garbage and saying stuff that only aussies would understand poor caleb man caleb (laughs) dude he's just like you know I'm i'm a fan of his stream and stuff and the dude was just like <laughs> he just I, don't, didn't, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> he's just Riley would just like bang on about the difference between the fact that Americans call it math and, it, and the rest of the world calls it maths and things like yeah. that. And Caleb's just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. He was so confused. I thought the coverage was really good. I thought they did a good job. And it was nice to see Paper Magic again. <laughs> it feels like it's been a minute since we've seen. Yeah. The Nagoya coverage seemed to be a little bit higher quality um, in terms of the footage and their camera angles and things like that that they were getting. Either way, yeah, like Craig said, you're seeing good high-level magic played in, in paper and you're seeing all the pros that, that we all sort of know if you, you follow that scene. So, yeah, it was really good. There was one thing I really... I didn't watch a lot of the Nagoya coverage, but the one thing I did really pick up on is there was a judge that was sitting at the table of the feature match area in, in a suit that was a little bit too big for him. And yep. I wish I had 5% of that dude's concentration. <laughs> Like he, I, I, he had, he was the sharpest person I've ever witnessed. He he was so focused. He was like hyper focused on e- absolutely everything that was happening. And sorry, tangent. Um, and he, I, he was almost even though he didn't move. Like literally, I, I don't think he actually blinked in case he missed something in the game. But he was almost as entertaining as the magic that was being played because his his focus was incredible. It was almost a game to watch him. Oh, he, he twitched, he twitched, he fidgeted. Uh, but yeah, he was he was incredible. So whoever that's, whoever that's, you that's are, that's why we watch the streams. Yeah, whoever you are, Japanese judge guy, you're awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he listens to our cast. Yeah, he definitely does. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, off, off from that tangent. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think you guys sort of mentioned it in the previous cast that what looked like what, what was going to be the breakout deck for the PTs was the Demir Inverter deck. And we even had Canister, Piotr Glagowski. He put out his deck list like three days before the, the PT, before deck lists were meant to be submitted and said, this is the deck list I'm playing. Here's my sideboard guide. Here's how you beat my deck. This is what I'm playing. And what did he do? He made his way all the way into the finals. 
So that guy, the guy's a little bit of a freak, and yeah, uh, that's just... that's that's off the back of winning the last Mythic Championship. Yeah, uh, where oh, he did the, the same the dude thing. Can magic. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that that deck, the the Demir Inverter deck, was definitely the the breakout deck um, for anyone who watched coverage. It was everywhere. Um, if you combined the metagame percentages from Nagoya and Brussels, it was the most played deck, um, with Mono Black being the uh, the second most. So, but yeah, it, it was pretty big for those who are listening who. I have no idea what you're talking about when you say Demir Inverter. Yep. What, they should have listened to our last cast. They should have, <laughs> yes. Uh, but just give us, just, well, okay, um, without making them pause and, uh, and go back and, and listen <laughs> oh, to the last right. cast, uh, even though the, the hosting was incredible, um, give us, Shorty, the, uh, the breakdown of, of, of what this deck does. Yeah, so the the main combo in it, so Demir is blue and black, if you, if you can't remember that. We've been through that in the past as well. Yep. But the, the two-card combo in this is Inverter of Truth, which is a Eldrazi from Oath of the Gatewatch, I think it is. It's two and two black black for a 6-6 six, six flying Eldrazi, and it says when it comes into, the, into play, you exile all the cards in your library, and your graveyard now becomes your library. All right, so that's that's the first part of the combo. The second part, the other card, is Thassa's Oracle, which is a recent print from uh, Theros, Theros Beyond Death, and that is blue, blue, or one blue, blue. Yep, blue, no, blue, 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 blue. Yep. 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 Uh, it's, I think it's like a one three or something, but that's it irrelevant. Um, but it has also has an into the battlefield ability where cast trigger. No, no, it enters the battlefield. It's not a. It's not a, it's not a cast trigger. It's, a, oh, it's an enters right, the battlefield trigger. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Um. So when it enters the battlefield, you can look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. So how many blue mana symbols you have in your permanence, and then you can put one of those cards on the top of your library, the rest on the bottom. But then it has another line of text that says, if X, if the, your devotion to blue is equal to or greater than the number of cards in your library, you win the game. So yeah. basically, you're they're playing a Demir control shell. So you're playing Thought Seizers and Counter Spells and Fatal Pushes and things like that to control the game. You're playing Dig Through Time so you can delve away your graveyard to keep it small. Uh, and then at some point, you're casting in often in the one turn. You cast a Inverter. You exile your library. You put the three or four cards that you might have left in your in your graveyard as your library, and then not long after that, you're winning with Thassa's Oracle or uh, Jace Wielder of Mysteries does a does a similar thing. So it's really strong, and it's actually quite hard to disrupt because it's built around a blue black control shell. They just stall out, you know, to make the game go long. The turn before they want to combo, or the turn that they want to combo, they thought say sees you to see if you've got any disruption, and if you don't, well, then you're just dead. So, yeah, the the deck's yeah, it's, it's actually a, it's just a, very good a, deck. a really good blue black control deck with you know fatal pushes and thought seizes and counter spells and um, you know dig through time lets you you know find the the answer to whatever question's being asked as well as being able to or find, find your, your combo, combo really pieces. well and yep. also makes your graveyard really small. Uh, to uh, when you do inverter, it means that you know your devotion to blue has to be a lot less because you've delved away a bunch of stuff for your Thassa's Oracle. So yeah, it's it's a really good. I, I think if it just had like a random, you know, traditional control win condition, you know, would be that a planeswalker or a, you know sticky flying um, win con- win condition, it'd probably be a halfway decent deck. But the fact that it just has this button that it can press and just win. Um, yeah, certainly makes it sort of one of the one of the best decks, if not the best deck in the format, right? Yeah. So I, I played against this deck in round one of the Pioneer event on the on from the bushfire thing, and I game one I beat him in like three minutes, just had the the, the nut draw, um, and then game two and game three he comboed me out before I could kill him, and there was literally nothing I could do. <laughs> It's just, yeah. if you got it, you know, he casts Inverter and then it's like, have you got the Oracle? Yep, here it is. Okay, you win. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of has that um, that Splinter Twin sort of feel to it where if you tap out, they know that they can just win. So, yeah, I, I think game two against that opponent, I hard cast a um, 
prized amalgam. And so my opponent just untapped and went, all right, well, you're, you're tapped out. So you obviously have no interaction. So I'm just going to invert her and Oracle and game over. So it was, yeah, it was the same playing against twin. If you ever tapped out, they would end, end a turn, flash in the Pestamite or the, uh, whatever the other dude's name is and then untap. Deceiver X. Yeah, that's the one. And just, just win the game. So. Yeah, int- interesting deck. Um, at the Nagoya, so it, it didn't actually win in Brussels. Uh, Brussels was won by Yol Larson. Can we, can we start calling you Yol, Cracker? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yol. <laughs> also, what, did, what did it come up with on the previous cast? It was, uh, Chonky Red. <sighs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you would have forgotten. We should have a different nickname for Cracker on every cast. Every, every week. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yo. He was playing his own deck, Swedish Saltai, to get us back on track. Yes, uh, yes. And he, he was he was uh, basically green black delirium, um, but he was playing Uro as like yeah, blue, the new blue glue to Uro. make Saltai good and like a bunch of mystical disputes and things in the sideboard. And, and it, it was very good. Dude crushed. Mm. It was his own brew. The, there's a there's a bunch of the guys, um, you know, kind of working with him. But um, yeah, it was was his his baby and. He ran the tables with it, man. Yeah. So, he took down Canister in the finals. The games were actually quite good. They were, they were really good to watch. I watched watched that final. I actually watched a lot of coverage or at least listened to a lot of coverage over the weekend. And, um, yeah, that, that was quite a good final. And, yeah, it was, was kind of good to see that Inverter didn't win. But the rest of the top eight in Brussels was quite diverse. Like, we had Mono Red. We had Spirits. We had... Uh, Niv to light. light, yeah, yeah. So a whole, whole bunch of different decks. Uh, there was a mono black deck in there, like a vampires deck as well. So, um, yeah, re- really diverse in Brussels. Nagoya, on the other hand, was not so diverse in the top eight. Uh, there was five inverter decks, which was probably more what people expected the top eight to look like. So, the thing to remember at these events is that there's three rounds of limited at the start of each day, so that can actually play quite a big effect on who ends up in the top eight. But yeah, five inverter decks. Uh, the overall event was won by Bent Spirits, Kenta Harane. But the the spicy deck that came out of that, which we mentioned before, was uh, Ken Yukihiro. Who, if 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 you don't know who Ken Yukihiro is, I suggest you go and look him up. He's a he's a cheerful looking dude. I'll, I'll put it that way. He's always got a massive smile on his face. He, he loves magic. Yeah, and he just always brings. Crazy decks. <laughs> yeah, and somehow. At the last MC, I was saying that the deck I really loved was his because he was playing five color fires, right? With New yeah. Visit Reborn in it. He's just like, he's always got some spice, man. He's always- the Brewers he- champion, isn't he? Yeah, but, but he, he so wins good. with them too. That's <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> and often what you find is like he'll p- come up with this crazy brew and he'll do really well with it. And so all of a sudden, Arena or Magic Online, whatever, those decks are everywhere. And within two days, people are going, this deck sucks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how is anyone winning with this deck? And somehow, Ken Yukihiro, he's the only one that can win with them. <laughs> so, what so, that yeah, he- tells me is he's really good at finding the best deck for the tournament, right? It might yeah, not be the best um, deck for the format or whatever, yeah, but he's Just be- coming up with some, some spice just for that tournament. Yeah. So, and like, that's a, that's a talent and hats off to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, that that, that deck was very spicy. So it was a, a black white or an Ors of uh, Auras deck, or Auras sort of base- for those who auras. doesn't know what an Aura is. <laughs> <laughs> it's an enchantment that goes on a creature. Yeah, but yeah, based around SRAM Senior Edificer, who's uh, no cracker. You've had, you've had a bit of a, a connection to SRAM before playing yeah. the Cheerios deck. Playing Cheerios, yeah, he's great. But yeah, basically, you just you play a bunch of creatures. And you just put a bunch of enchantments on them, and they get really big, and you protect them, and you just win that way. So yeah, Sram lets you draw cards when you cast auras, yeah, which is yeah, the, the so synergy there. So it lets you just kind of keep going, and but yeah. it's it's got the it takes advantage of the uh, enchantment creature from Theros, which is like the one shot Mother of Runes. Yeah, um, Al- Alcide Life's Bounty. Yeah, so you can and pay pay one and sack it and give something protection, and also we- Hateful Eidolon. So when something that- yep. It has auras on it, dies, you draw cards. So it's one of those decks where you look at it and you go, oh man, like how do you ever gain an advantage on it? And then you play through it and you're like, I have six auras on this creature and I have five cards in hand still. How did that happen? Yeah, Just and, like- and I've got the L seed, so you yeah. know, you need two removal yeah, spells and, and to and deal with Ka- it. Karametra's Blessing, which gives them hexproof, indestructible, and that card's that sort of very thing, good. So. It yeah. is very good. So it's a good deck. Um, had a bit of fun playing it, just just sort of messing around, but 
yeah, I don't know how good it would be going forward. Uh, but yeah, pretty pretty cool bit of spice. Yeah, and then the the following weekend we ended up with the uh, Americas Regional Players Tour, which was held in Phoenix. And it's safe to say that was a bit different to the previous one. So the 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 people playing at the American one had the benefit of being able to see the decks that came out at at Brussels and Nagoya and react to it. So the um the big breakout for that event was the Lotus Breach, which which was present at Brussels and Nagoya, but at the Phoenix one, people had uh, yeah they definitely tuned it a bit more. And they they seem to have moved. I don't know if you guys have looked at the deck list, but they've moved to a basically a wish sideboard. So they're they're yeah. running four Fay of Wishes, uh, and they're just pulling what they need out of out of the sideboard. So the deck's all built around Underworld Breach, which is a, an enchantment, a one and a red enchantment that uh, lets you cast cards from your graveyard, and it gives them gives every card in your graveyard escape, and the cost is three. So you ex- exile three cards from your graveyard, and you pay its normal mana cost. Uh, so you're... Uh, and then at the end of the turn, you exile Underworld Breach. So you basically just win in one turn, but yeah, they, they cast that. They're, they're using the uh, Lotus Field to sort of ramp their mana, uh, a couple of spells to untap their Lotus Fields. Thespian stage so that you yep. can like double up on your Lotus Fields without having to sack more lands. So they yeah. gain a real advantage from that. And yep. what my favourite way to win with this deck is with Thassa's Oracle, which is um, out of, you know, we just talked about with the Demir and yeah, Inverted deck. Yeah, just back in the Inverted and, deck. And uh, Tome Scour in the as a wish target in the sideboard. So yeah. you, you time scour, uh, you put the top five cards uh, into your uh, into your graveyard, and then with Underworld Breach, you exile three to replay time scour. So with the, the hidden strings and continuing to untap your lands, you, you know, you mill yourself out until you just, and, you know, gaining blue mana along the way, play your Thassa's Oracle game over. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite cute. It's very good. Yeah. Same sort of thing as the inverter deck. You you're either winning with Thassa's Oracle or Jace, and yeah, it's 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 weird that we have two decks that both win by milling yourself <laughs> and having no cards left in your library. That's a little bit odd <laughs> to, it's, to say it's the least. It's really strong, right? Like yeah. the, the fact that once you once Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield. That's it. The trigger goes on the stack, and like even if your opponent kills it from underneath, then it doesn't matter. And so that was always the problem with um, Laboratory Maniac, which is where this kind of effect comes from. Where if you draw from an empty library, then you win the game. Um, then you know, like you got to draw your last card on an opt or something, and they go in response, kill your lab man, and you just die. Yeah. So like th- that's kind of where it comes from. But it it also has a really good, wouldn't say fair game plan, but because it's got just all these wish targets. Like I saw Huey play a nuts game against um, Heliod Combo where he had to wish for uh, an Ugin and he, he he battled through like Rest in Peace and like two different um, Gideon's Interventions and just like all this stuff. And like the way he navigated it was, was phenomenal. And like you would actually see quite a lot of people win the hard way where they didn't combo off but they would win like like over eight turns with jace or something like that and kind of grind it out so deck has a lot of play to it apart from the just like turn four i win button again so it's really sweet it reminds me of you know uh attacking for three with scrap heap scroungers it's it's dear to my heart <laughs> just attacking for one with your with your lanoir elves you got the the 20 turn clock <laughs> <laughs> Slow, slowly get there. Well, it's it's Bolt Snap Bolt from um, Splinter Twin, right? Like the amount of games that yeah. didn't actually win through Twin Combo and they just nickel and dime yeah. with all the other stuff and you just have to respect yeah. it. Sl- slowly beat them with a with a Snapcaster Mage yeah. and then, yeah, Bolt Snap Bolt and win the game. I guess for, for newer players out there that are building their own deck for, you know, the first time, just Scott getting into Commander might want to brew, brew their own deck and go, wow, there's this really cool interaction that I like um, that is really powerful and that, that inspires you to, you know, build that deck. Um, make sure you've got a plan B, I guess. And and if you're playing limited and you go, oh, I've got my bomb, I've got this big dragon, I'm going to win the game, you've got to make sure you can win the game if you don't draw that dragon, right? So I yeah. think it's an important magic lesson for the newer players out there to, um, you know, don't don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. yeah. End tangent. So, D- Demir Inverter did end up winning 
in Phoenix. So that was Corey Burkhardt. And, and yeah, he played against Huey, William Huey Jensen, who's a, a very well known Magic player who was playing Lotus Breach. Um, yeah, beat him in the final. I didn't actually get to watch that final, but from what I've heard, the third game was basically a non game and yeah, not, not much happened. So. Um, yeah, a bit of a shame there, but a pretty diverse top eight again. A couple of Lotus Breach, a couple of Spirits, a couple of Diver- uh, Inverter, some Saltide Delirium, some Mono Red. So, yeah, like the meta game for Phoenix was like 20% Inverter um, and then Spirits and Mono Red and Lotus Breach being the other sort of main deck. So it's, it's still pretty diverse. Like you've yeah. got these two main decks that are potentially problems in Inverter and, and Lotus Breach. But it's there's still a lot of decks being played, so it's it's kind of good to see that Pioneer is still doing all right. Uh, we won't go into it too much, but what are your you guys' thoughts on bannings? Are we going to see something banned out of out of these decks, and if so, what? Mm, so there's arguments for dig through time. Yep. Um, because it's played in both, and it it's just like in these decks that just mill themselves so hard. It's it's almost instant speed demonic tutor, right? Or double yeah. demonic tutor. You just go blue, blue, exile seven, uh, and then find whatever it is. Yeah, exile six. Find the two cards right? I need. Find the two cards I want, and then untap, win the game. So people have been saying since the very start of Pioneer that maybe like dig through time and also treasure cruise might be too good. Um, it hasn't really been a problem up till now, so I can see that that might get a look. But at the same time, they're also brand new. So like, yeah. let's give it a hot minute to see if we can like come up with something that'll beat it because like the the super aggressive um loaded ground mono aggro decks with like embercleave and things like that they can just straight race these decks yeah. so there's there's definitely options there and now control has a target so then you can build a control deck to kind of beat on these things so like i, I think that we we should let i hope they let pioneer run for a bit i mean there was a ban and restricted announcement this week which they didn't do in, there were no changes yeah they said they're not not banning anything and they will announce um, when they're gonna <laughs> do an announcement yeah. <laughs> anyway yes but, so i mean it seems like wizards are happy to let this play for a little while so i don't I think there's any major pioneer events not. coming up for a little while so no. i think there might be a, another gp, a GP in, in like a month, month or something or so, yeah but yeah i like i'm basically on the same boat as you i i think dig would be the target um, because yeah, it it is a it's a crazy powerful card, but I would like to see them let it go for a while and and see what happens. So I don't. Know. Where where do you sit on it, Chu? Uh, if they were to ban anything, it would be dig. But I think there are enough cards that answer dig, and the cards that answer dig slow down those decks enough that uh, I I think it would be a a mistake to ban. In the next couple of weeks, so I think wait yeah. till after that. If if that GP is you know six inverted decks in the top eight and ten in the top sixteen, then then maybe. But I like rest in peace, leyline of the void, etc. Uh, are in the format. They also uh, help you combo off because you've got an empty yeah. graveyard. So I've seen people do that where someone just goes, oh, "I lead on leyline," and my opponent goes, so "Guys, turn six, I win." Yeah. Like just, so yes, it's like, but, but it, the it format also dig, has it does you know, if you've got ley lines sure. you've probably got thought ceases, right? So yeah. you know, you can you know, your opponent might get lucky and just go, Oops, I've got it. But you know if you if you've got ley line and And pressure. You know, and pressure, yeah. yeah and sure. and that's a whole other topic about keeping hands with, you know, uh, the good sideboard cards, but it's a dysfunctional hand otherwise, and and you lose. <laughs> um, that's a, yeah, that's a whole thing unto itself. But um, yeah, if to answer your question, they might da- ban dig, uh, but I think that would be a mistake. Cool. I think I think we're all in agreement there. So, be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, hopefully they let it sit for a while, and yeah, people get to adjust to it. So. But, uh, yeah, like I said, that's it for Pioneer for a little while. Uh, I know for us personally, we will probably have a Pioneer tournament towards the end of March, a, a PTQ that we'll likely play. But between now and then, we probably won't play much Pioneer. Uh, and the next tournament we are looking towards playing is Standard. And this weekend, we actually have the World Championship coming up. So, yeah, Feb, Feb 14th to 16th in, in Honolulu, the, the World Championship. So... Cracker, do you want to give us a bit of a rundown on, on what's going on there? Sure. So, really small field. Uh, what have we got? 16 players. Uh, and it's going to be 
draft and standard. And so I think we, we talked about this before. So it's going to be Theros um, draft. They're drafting in paper and then they're going to be uploading the decks to Arena and then battling the actual games on Arena. Which yeah, there, there, there was a bit of speculation when they announced it because they, they had previously said a while ago that uh, Worlds was going to be on Arena and people cracked it. They're like, oh, it's going to suck. Worlds should be multiple formats, that sort of thing. It shouldn't be just standard. And then when they came out and announced that Worlds was going to be draft and standard, all of a sudden it was like, oh, hang on, are they like revealing that we're going to actually have real live drafts on Arena and whatever? But I did get excited, sa- sa- to be honest. Sadly, no. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but they, they but have come, around with, come up with a good work coming this year, though. Yeah, they have. They've, as, they've as come well out as with, on mobile, apparently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other thing we'll get into yeah. another day. But, um, yeah. yeah, today the um, all the decks have been released. So, the, the metagame is up. And there is a grand total of <clears throat> five decks. So, there is four players on Team Which Lyric. is not bad for standard. It's it's pretty good, actually. Well, you know. Yeah, no, it is. It's 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 actually quite diverse, and and particularly considering the size of the field. So, there's four players on Team of Reclamation, four players on Mono Red Aggro, four players on Jeskai Fires, three players on Azorius Control, and one lonely canister hanging out by himself <laughs> on Jun Sacrifice. It, it cracks yeah. me up because I'm looking at this and it's got like his picture, but he's six percent of the field. <laughs> it's <just> like, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's one guy. He's six percent. How does this work? So it's a massive um, metagame share. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, like three of the decks are twenty five percent each, um, and then Blue White Control is is nineteen percent. So well, I, I heard that Canister had a bet that if he won the last Mythic Championship. With Jun Cat, he would play it at Worlds, and okay. um, you know he he did uh, he did win obviously, uh, and because you know a, a canister always pays their debts, uh, he's playing at Worlds. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I mean, Chewie had already put that in our Discord chat. Today, I know, <laughs> and I can't believe he still went with it. <laughs> okay, really? No, actually, yeah, I can't. I can't. Yeah. I can't believe. Yeah, yeah. Look, anyway, you didn't tell me it was bad. On. Let's Just move on. Your your <laughs> non reply. I didn't to. read as uh, you know a bad joke. I just but went. The problem okay. is if. If we reply, then you take that as encouragement either way. So, Should like, no you're just trying now to ignore a, you. A non-reply means we did not appreciate it. No, anyway. you've got to be specific, man. Anyway, anyway so, yeah. move, moving on. <laughs> moving on. So, look, it'll be interesting. Uh, I'm not going to run through all the lists. If people want to see it, there's uh, go to, like, Magic GG. Um, you know, it's kind of got the whole... Uh, they've done a really good job, actually, in terms of like a breakdown of like the metagame and who's playing what and their, their specific lists. But then also, I think it was Reed Duke wrote the article. Um, and okay. so, there's like a bunch of stuff about like who's well positioned against whom and, you know, like the, the mono red deck should get under the, the team of reclamation deck. And, you know, so there's, yeah, there's is, a whole- Reed Duke. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. There's, there's a whole bunch of um, kind of rock, paper, scissors thing happening, which will be really interesting to see how that plays out. And uh, I think we, we may have mentioned it before, but you, there's an th- option to, to choose your champion. And Wizards has been running this little promotion. If you've played Arena at all in the last probably m- month, I yeah, guess. Yeah, about, about a month they've been promoting it for. Um, and you can you can basically just say, hey, this is the, the player that I hope is going to win or that I think is going to take it down. And, you know, depending on how well they do, then you get like packs and like, you know, in-card what are they called? Individual card rewards and stuff yeah. like that yeah, inside the card arena. Yeah, styles or whatever they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and there's also, um, I think there's going to be running an event soon, either yeah, start, during starts Worlds, tomorrow. Yep. where you can actually play all of the decks just to oh, get an sweet. idea of what's going on. So, it, you, you pay like an entry fee and whatever, but you- No, no, it's, for, it's free. So, it's oh, is a it? free, free event. So, oh, you, you just jump in and you can choose which of the, the 16 decks you want to play and you can play for as much as you want. As, as many games as you want over the whole weekend that Worlds is on, uh, and you get XP, so XP towards your um, mastery tree for your first two wins. And it, the last time they've done these sorts of things, it's like a thousand per thing. So it's it's not a it's a fair chunk of uh, it's basically one level per per thing. Uh, and then if you get your th- once you get your three wins, you get some card styles or whatever, something like that. But yeah, it run, runs the whole weekend and it's free. So. If you're not sure on what you should be playing in standard at the moment, this is a great time to be jumping on and not having to spend your wild cards and, uh, yeah, get get a bit of a, a crack at the standard format with the pros decks. I think they've done a really good job with this Worlds. Yes, I think they've, yes. They've really lent into it in terms of star building. You know, they're really yep. trying to promote the players and, and kind of what they're going on. Um, 
I chose before I knew deck lists, and I don't know if it's a bad idea, but I chose PV, Paulo Victor Domodorosa. Yeah, you, you, as the, you had to choose before the deck list came out. Then. No, you actually they, didn't. Oh, really? You had until yeah, you can midnight. Now. Yeah, yeah, so you can still oh, change really? it. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it was it was interesting that they let that kind of run. Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd, I'd heard that it was it had to be done before. No, no. So there were a bunch of people on Twitter today saying, "Oh, it's cool. I can change <laughs> who, I, who, who I'm voting for right. now." Um, and so, like you know, I filled out the little thing and I went, "Oh, look, PV's." just insane and keeps top eighting everything like there's a he he can just win with a ham sandwich um <laughs> he so, could win with mono blue <laughs> he, he could he could definitely win with mono blue tempo <laughs> yeah yeah no w- wouldn't be Un- like somebody else on this yeah. podcast yeah correct <laughs> uh so and so <laughs> throwing off my train of thought <clears throat> anyway um yeah, they, so they, were got, the, they were running the hype videos email all weekend. From Wizards with a, like a little thank you note from PV. Obviously, not like directly to me, but they've gone through and spent the time saying, you know, just like a little note from, from the player that you chose. And like, they've never done that before. No. Which is really cool because now like I'm more invested to see, yeah. like I've picked PV. I want to see his games. I want to see how he does. So like, well done for um, engagement. Yeah, yeah really kind of, it, it, kind it of, kind of brings in that like fantasy football type thing where you like I, I play fantasy football NFL. No idea what that is, mate. <laughs> our play, fantasy NFL football, not not Aussie rules football. The, our fantasy version is not very good. But yeah, you're you're picking players from other teams, and so you're watching games and you're rooting for individual players rather than the actual teams, and and it definitely makes you more interested in watching games that aren't for your team. So. Um, yeah, this is good. It just adds that layer to to you watching the event over the weekend where it's, oh, come on, PV, like, I really want you to win. I mean, you get some card rewards. It's not like you get much out of it, but it, it is cool. It's just a, it's a whole It's all about level. interest, and it's, it's all about profile building. The yeah. Something that so, the Star City guys- I don't know been- if you guys saw over the, um, the coverage from the previous PTs, but they've done these interview videos with each of the players that are on the- um, at the World Championship. Yeah. And they're, they're like really good quality, like sports style where, you know, the person's sitting there in a chair and you've got cameras filming from multiple angles and that sort of stuff. And it's just them talking to the camera in, in response to questions or whatever, which is cool. Like them explaining how they got into magic and, and different things like that and what, what motivates them. But at the end of each player's yeah. video, they would say, the player would say, my name is such and such and I'm the, I'm, the next world champion but they would say it in their language obviously worlds you've got people from all over the world playing they're all speaking different languages that sort of stuff it was just really cool to have that personal touch for people from those regions and, and that sort of thing so it showed the diversity and i think what it showed as well is the the people that were actually speaking like javier dominguez and pv and, and those guys uh they took it seriously so yeah what they said it with a, a, a bit of resolve and uh it made you like every time i watch one of those it's like oh i want you to win oh i want you yeah, to win yeah. you know so it, it builds that i don't know star power if yeah, you like okay. for one of it a kind of legitimizes thing. it a little bit too yeah it's like uh, this isn't just another tournament like this is a massive thing and, and and that's something a lot of people complained about you know we had that video that got released last year sometime about, you know, the world will know. Oh, <laughs> that was bad. Whoever the rapper was that was on there and all that sort of stuff. And the video was, like, it was funny. It was kind of well done. But people were like, the world will know what? Like, who's going to know what? Like, what are you talking about? This is the sort of stuff that they've been working towards. Like, anyone could watch these. Like, they, they put up a hype video this week of, of all the players, like, you know, coming through the back entrances of buildings and all that sort of stuff to come to the tournament to play and things like that. Anyone can watch that sort of stuff and watch the player interviews and things and get invested in it without being a, a magic player and, and being invested in the competitive scene. And that is awesome that the Wizards has gone to that level uh, and put that sort of effort in. So... Yeah. Well, well done, Wizards. If if someone from Wizards listens to this podcast, well done. You've, you've yeah. done a fantastic and job. Also, a, can we get a preview card? Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> and, you know, uh, the streamer thing too, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I, what it also does, and it's something I've just kind of realised as you were just explaining that, Shorty, is uh, people are, are into magic for different reasons, obviously. Yeah. And so, I... I will often sit in my lounge room whilst, you know, my wife's reading a book on the couch next to me and the kids are playing and I will be watching a stream. And um, 
through interviews and, and these promo videos and, and things like that, you know, Jen will pop her head up over a Kindle and go, oh, who's that guy? Who's that girl? Right. And and she gets invested. Like she likes it when Reed Duke does well because, you know, he's a good personality. And when she watches, you know, Javier, uh, who's, you know, doesn't really have a poker face and sees the emotion, um, uh, she goes, oh, I hope he wins. You know, not knowing that he's a previous world champion, but she's like, oh, it looks like it means a lot to that guy. So it's getting interest from, you know, a much broader audience, uh, which you touched yeah. on. Yes. But yeah, I think it's a, a you know, again, well done. It's something yeah, that cre- the. Uh, it creates that personal connection to, to the people that you're watching and, and you get invested. Like, I mean, I, like I watch, I'm not into cycling at all, but every now and then when the Tour de France is on, you get sucked into watching it and you're watching it till 4 a.m. and like you're just watching people riding bikes. It's boring as all hell, but you get sucked into a storyline about someone who's trying to do this certain thing and this person's trying to win this this stage for their team and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And you just get sucked into it and it, it's just storyline. So, yeah, good good on you, Wizards, and, uh, yeah, well done on this event, which, which also – Million dollar prize pool. <laughs> that's uh, oh, that's yeah, probably worth epic. mentioning. Yeah, yeah, three hundred yeah. grand. Three hundred grand for first place. Wow, that's uh, that's uh, a lot of money. So I'll take some card styles, PV. I think <laughs> you can afford them. In fact, I'll take some gems. Uh, who, yeah. who was your pick, Shorty? Uh, I picked uh, Andrea Mangucci. I'm uh, as did I. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of Mangucci. M- me uh, too. He was like right up on my list, and now that I see he's yeah, playing yeah, Bono but- Red. Uh, yeah, but PV and, and Mangucci were my top two, and I went, nah, I'm, I'm going to go with Mangucci. So. He's on a heater at the moment, too. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you can't pass up Javier, reigning world champion, that sort of thing. So, who knows? I mean, it's be good. All, all 16 of them are capable of winning, right? They're all... Well, yeah, yeah obviously. Like, players. to get to this tournament, so there's, like Cracker said, 16 players. They're the winners from the previous Pro Tour Mythic Championships, that sort of stuff from from the last year, effectively. There's Javier Dominguez, the the reigning world champion. There's top players from the MPL, the Magic Pro League, that sort of thing. So to get there, like to be one of these 16 players is a massive, massive effort. Like you are top level player. So any of them can easily win it. Like, yeah. It's it's going to be good. going to be interesting and and I'm tipping the coverage is going to be amazing. So tune into that on Twitch and... uh, yeah, enjoy enjoy the coverage and jump on arena and play some uh, some good standard decks, which I think we will all be doing, or at least me and Chewy, because I think we're planning on uh, playing a standard event in the next few weeks. So get an idea, a bit of an idea of where the meta is heading. All right, uh, we've got another couple of things just to sort of wrap up on the way out. We'll try and get through these a little bit quick because we're starting to run a bit long. First thing we wanted to do is another announcement. So. Uh, sort of, I guess, going off the success of our the bushfire event that we ran and kind of building on the hype a little bit, we had another donation separate from the uh, bushfire fundraiser donated by uh, Matt, who is uh, Chris's younger brother. Chris, Chris is that host that is very occasionally on this podcast, if you, you can't remember who he is. I think he's just been downgraded to special guest. Yeah, okay, right. Are we going to go down the... Uh, no, no, let's no, not no, go no, down no. that line. No. <laughs> Yeah, so Matt donated very kindly to the podcast for us to do whatever we wanted with a box of Throne of Eldraine, and we kind of tossed around a few ideas of what to do with it. We were going to donate it to the fire um, thing or, or maybe do a giveaway on Twitter, that sort of stuff, and we thought, let's run a league. So I've seen on a few other, through a few other podcasts and through discords and things like that, that a few people have run leagues through Arena, and we thought, you know what, doesn't seem that hard to do, let's give it a crack ourselves. So... We will be launching a league uh, that will be free entry, so anyone can enter anywhere, anywhere in the world. Doesn't matter if you're a new player, an experienced player, whatever. Free to enter, no cost, and the box of El Drain will be going up as a prize support for the event. So, wow, not a hundred percent sure on structure or what the prize payout will be. We'll wait and see how many people we get. We may run it as a Swiss tournament um, or round robin where everybody plays everybody once with playoffs. Uh, I'm not sure. That will be dependent on how many people we'll get. And then same with the prize support. So we may just split the box and, and do, you know, 20 packs for first place and whatever, 10 for second and four for 
six for third, um, something like that. But we're going to start it up now uh, or, or open it up now, and we will be kicking off the league on the 2nd of March. So you've got almost three weeks to uh, register your interest in playing in that league. Uh, and then as of or getting closer to the 2nd of March, we'll have a bit of a better idea of number of players and I'll come up with some more details by then. And then, yeah, we'll kick it off from then. So it'll be run through Arena and basically you'll be given a matchup to play and you just organise through uh, whatever means you need to to play that person through Arena, and then you just send me your results, and I'll keep track of it. Once we work out the structure, we'll work out when it's going to finish, and then we'll give away the prizes. So, How do they register interest? Well, so as, as I mentioned a couple of times, we'll be running this through Discord, and... Mm. One thing we've decided to do is actually open up our Discord. So we've mentioned plenty of times on here that we obviously have a bit of a chat between all of us on on a Discord. We have a, a private Discord, and we've decided that we will be opening that up to the public. There's no reason to not have other people, other like-minded Magic fans out there on our Discord. So we will be putting, uh, probably when this episode goes out, we'll be putting a link to that Discord on our Twitter, uh, Facebook, and I'll also put a link in the show notes for every episode. So, yeah, if, if you've never used Discord before, it's just like an online messaging sort of server. It's, it's basically the replacement of, like, forums that, that people used to always be on. Um, yeah, you download the app on your phone, that sort of thing. And, yeah, like, we we just chat about magic. We chat about whatever in there. Um, you know, we post up deck lists we like, all that sort of thing. So, Share quality jokes. Yeah, yeah. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll create a separate channel called Chewy's Jokes. And, oh, yeah, we you, should. You can, that would be awesome. No, I'll be, I'll be muting that channel. Oh, uh, it's going to be the most popular <laughs> channel on our Discord, guarantee it. Yep. <laughs> It'll have one extra So, yeah. It's, uh, yes. So, we'd love as many people out there that listen to join our Discord. Uh, yeah, we, we want to keep in touch with the with our listeners, and this is going to be probably the quickest and easiest way for us to, to get information out to there and for you guys to be in touch with us and ask us questions and, you know, suggestions for the show, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, c- keep an eye out for the link, join the Discord, and then I will put a, uh, a post through there, and you can just contact me through Discord and register your interest for the league. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just set up a channel for the league and we can organise everything through that. So That's really exciting. I'm, I'm yeah, I'll, I'll give you some free wins, people. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, can we play? <laughs> yeah, we can play. Uh, we're, we just we'll probably play. work out, you know, I don't think it would be right to give us the prizes. So we I might don't have know to work that we can win that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> is is there actually good. a risk that we would get the prizes? That, no. I guess that's... Yeah, uh, not for me. yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not. Shorty might. <laughs> uh, maybe. We'll see. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to that. I like I I'm myself am on a few discords from other podcasts and things like that, and and it's really cool. Like I, I was sort of talking to Chewy before the cast. My phone is just going off all day, every day, with magic chat from people all around the world, and it's great because you you know you're getting people from America talking at different times of day and people from Australia and all that sort of stuff and all around the world. So there's just always magic chat going on and, you know, people post on there, oh, I'm looking, I'm thinking of running this deck, what do people think? And people giving feedback and teeing up cards to borrow at events and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's a really good way to build a community and I would really love for the Magic Beans community to jump on board with this and, yeah, join our Discord and say good day and, and have a chat. So keep an eye out for that. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the Discord soon. So I think that's going to be it for tonight, unless you guys have got anything else that you can think of that I've missed. I think we've we've covered everything. No, just, again, thank you for everyone involved in the Bushfire event. Uh, I, could, you know, I could never say thank you enough, but I'm just going to say it a lot and hope I, <laughs> you know, get there, get there one day. Um, yeah, $2,354 donated yeah, well, from well the Magic community to all, the most worthy of causes. So, um just absolutely amazing. Yep. All right, cool. So we'll wrap it up there. So, yeah, if you want to get in contact with us, uh, yeah, like I said, jump on our Discord. You can find, you'll can you be able to find the link in the show notes or on our Twitter and Facebook. Uh, you can send us an email, magicbeanscast at gmail.com. You'll find us on Facebook or YouTube. Just search for Magic Beans Cast or Magic Beans Podcast. And on Twitter, we are at Magic Beans Cast. So... 
pretty easy to find us in all those places. If you want to find me, I am at Peace Inc. Uh, it's P-I-E-C-E-I-N-C. Cracker, you are? At Joel Hill underscore. And Chewy? At Chewy MTG. Very good. And that'll do us for this week. So thank you again for listening and we'll see you next time. Good night all. <laughs>